Faith, in the sense in which I'm here using the word, is the art of holding on to things your reason has once accepted, in spite of your changing moods. C.S. Lewis This statement might surprise you. It challenges the common notion that faith is blind belief. Lewis suggests that faith is an ongoing struggle, a conscious choice to cling to what we believe even when doubts cloud our minds. He encourages us to engage with our doubts, not shy away from them. In a world often divided by rigid beliefs, Lewis offers a refreshing alternative, a faith that acknowledges doubt, embraces questioning, and emerges stronger on the other side. C.S. Lewis, the renowned author of classics like The Chronicles of Narnia and Mere Christianity, was more than just a storyteller. He was a deep thinker who grappled with the big questions of life, faith, and doubt. Born in Belfast, Ireland in 1898, Lewis's journey was marked by both intellectual brilliance and spiritual searching. Initially an atheist, he found traditional religious views unconvincing. However, through philosophy and literature, he experienced a profound conversion to Christianity. This transformation ignited a passion to explore and defend his newfound faith through reason and logic. Lewis's impact extends beyond theological circles, captivating readers of diverse backgrounds. Faith at its core requires belief in something unseen, something beyond empirical proof. This leap of faith can be both exhilarating and terrifying. It's exhilarating because it connects us to something larger than ourselves, offering hope and meaning. But it's terrifying because it requires vulnerability, a surrender of absolute control. We yearn to believe, to find solace in life's uncertainties. Yet, doubts creep in like shadows, whispering questions that challenge our convictions. The struggle of faith is universal, transcending cultures, religions and time periods. C.S. Lewis's own journey of faith was not without its share of storms and uncertainties. In his younger years, he identified as an atheist, finding the arguments for God's existence unconvincing. The horrors of World War I, the loss of his mother, and the prevalence of suffering fueled his doubts. Lewis couldn't reconcile a benevolent God with the pain and suffering he witnessed. His struggle wasn't merely academic, it was deeply personal and emotional. He grappled with the problem of evil and the challenge of maintaining faith in adversity. True faith, he discovered, is forged in the crucible of wrestling with doubt. Perhaps the most universal struggle of faith revolves around the question of pain and suffering. Why, if God is good and all-powerful, does he allow suffering to exist? This age-old question has haunted humanity for centuries. Lewis recognized that pain and suffering are not merely intellectual problems, but deeply personal experiences. He endured his share of suffering, losing his wife to cancer and facing the challenges of war-torn England. These experiences profoundly impacted his faith, forcing him to confront the rawness of human existence. In his writings, Lewis doesn't offer easy answers to the problem of pain. Instead, he explores the complexities of faith in a world where suffering is an undeniable reality. Lewis suggests that suffering can serve as a catalyst for growth, empathy, and a deeper understanding of ourselves and our need for God. In the realm of Christian literature, mere Christianity stands as a towering pillar of intellectual engagement and spiritual insight. Published in 1952, this seminal work emerged from a series of radio broadcasts delivered by C.S. Lewis during World War II. At a time when the world was grappling with darkness and uncertainty, Lewis offered a beacon of hope and reason. 
Mere Christianity wasn't intended as a comprehensive theological treatise, but rather as an accessible exploration of the core principles of the Christian faith. Lewis sought to strip away the complexities and denominational differences, focusing on essential truths shared by Christians across traditions. The book's title reveals Lewis's intent to present the fundamental tenets of Christianity in their purest form. Mere Christianity invites readers to explore the foundations of faith in a clear, concise, and compelling manner. One of the key arguments presented by Lewis in Mere Christianity centers around the concept of the law of human nature. He posits that all human beings possess an innate understanding of right and wrong. This moral compass, Lewis argues, is not merely a product of societal conditioning, but an intrinsic part of being human. He points to the universality of moral codes across cultures and throughout history as evidence of this inherent moral law. This shared moral compass, he suggests, points to a higher authority, a source beyond ourselves. Lewis argues that our conscience testifies to a moral order that governs the universe. In a world increasingly embracing moral relativism, Lewis's argument for an objective moral law stands as a bold counterpoint. He challenges the notion that morality is merely a matter of personal preference or social construct. Lewis argues that if morality is truly subjective, then concepts like justice, fairness, and human rights become meaningless. If there is no objective standard of right and wrong, then any action can be justified by personal beliefs or cultural norms. He believed that society rejecting objective moral truth is on the brink of chaos and tyranny. Lewis's argument for a universal moral law has profound implications for how we understand ourselves and society. Having established the foundation of a universal moral law, Lewis presents what he calls the great claim of Christianity. He argues that Jesus Christ claimed to be the Son of God, the embodiment of God in human form. This claim, Lewis contends, is either true or the most audacious lie ever uttered. He challenges readers to grapple with the implications of Jesus' claims, arguing they cannot be dismissed as mere mythology. Lewis explores the evidence for Jesus' life, teachings, miracles, and resurrection, presenting a compelling case for the historical validity of the Christian faith. Mere Christianity invites readers to explore the truth claims of Christianity and discover the life-changing reality of faith in Christ. In the annals of Christian literature, the Screwtape Letters stands as a singular and profoundly insightful work. Published in 1942, amidst the turmoil of World War II, this epistolary novel offers a perceptive glimpse into the nature of spiritual warfare. Through letters written by a senior demon named Screwtape to his nephew Wormwood, Lewis unveils the tactics employed by the forces of darkness to lead humanity astray. Screwtape's instructions reveal the enemy's deep understanding of human psychology and his mastery of manipulation. The Screwtape Letters is not a horror story in the conventional sense, but evokes a recognition of the spiritual battles that rage within and around us. Lewis's genius lies in exposing the unseen forces at play in the human heart. One of the most striking aspects of the Screwtape Letters is its portrayal of temptation as a subtle, insidious process. Screwtape advises Wormwood to avoid overt evil, recognizing that humans are more easily swayed by gradual compromise. The safest road to hell is the gradual one, the gentle slope, soft underfoot, without sudden turnings, without milestones, without signposts. This observation reveals the enemy's strategy to lull us into a false sense of security, making sin appear appealing, and righteousness burdensome. 
Screwtape emphasizes exploiting human weaknesses, preying on insecurities, pride, and desires for comfort. Through Screwtape's advice, Lewis exposes how easily we can be led astray by our own desires. By presenting temptation from the perspective of demons, Lewis achieves something remarkable in the screw tape letters. He allows us to see ourselves and the world through the eyes of the enemy, understanding his tactics and recognizing his voice. This shift in perspective is both unsettling and illuminating. We see how easily our good intentions can be twisted, our virtues exploited and our relationships used as weapons against us. Yet this knowledge is empowering. By understanding the enemy's strategies, we are better equipped to resist his advances and stand firm in our faith. Throughout the screw tape letters, one theme emerges. The importance of humility in combating the forces of darkness. Screwtape recognizes that pride is humanity's greatest weakness. The enemy wants to take you as you are, writes Screwtape, and make you something more, but you must first be humbled. True spiritual growth requires a willingness to surrender our ego, acknowledge our dependence on God, and embrace humility as a source of strength. Humility disarms the enemy's tactics by stripping away our pretense of self-sufficiency. Lewis reminds us that spiritual victory lies in our willingness to surrender to a higher power and embrace humility. Imagine this, you're engrossed in a grief observed. Lewis's raw reflection on the death of his wife, Joy. The rawness of his grief is palpable, his questions echoing the cries of countless hearts that have known profound loss. Lewis, the great defender of faith, now wrestles with doubt, anger, and a sense of abandonment. He cries out, where is God in this suffering? This question is the climax of our journey through Lewis's struggles. It's the moment the intellectual facade crumbles, and we witness the raw vulnerability of a man grappling with the silence of God. In this rawness lies a profound truth. Faith is not the absence of doubt, but the courage to keep seeking even when God seems silent. Section 2. The Deep Magic. Embracing a larger narrative. The climax doesn't end in despair. It's in the depths of his grief that Lewis stumbles upon a profound realization a concept he refers to as the deep magic. This isn't a magical solution to pain, but a shift in perspective, a recognition of a larger narrative unfolding beyond our limited understanding. He writes, there is a deeper magic, that there is a purpose, a design, a great story, and we have a part to play in it, even if we may not understand all the details. This deep magic acknowledges the mystery and complexity of God's plan. It recognizes that our finite minds cannot fully grasp the infinite wisdom of a God who sees the tapestry of eternity while we glimpse only fragmented threads. This realization doesn't erase the pain, but reframes it. Suffering, Lewis suggests, is not evidence of God's absence, but a consequence of our existence in a broken world, a world yearning for redemption, the deep magic invites us to trust in the goodness of God, even when we can't trace his hand, to find solace in the knowledge that we are part of a story far grander than our own. The Enduring Legacy of C.S. Lewis Lewis grappled with life's most challenging questions, inviting us to join him in honest inquiry. He didn't offer simplistic answers, but encouraged us to confront our fears. His legacy is a testament to intellectual humility and the courage to embrace doubt. Lewis's words resonate because they speak to our deepest longings for meaning and love. 